Welcome back to our post-game Ultra Space Area, the Ultra Convergence, for the Astara region, my Australian-based region. Wow, I can't believe we're here nearly at the end. With only two more main areas left, we're going to head towards the Ultra Forest. A densely packed forest that is more than what it seems. Expect plenty of brass types and some real freaks. Just some absolute weirdos waiting for you within. When you enter the forest, before even heading in, you're offered a challenge by one of its many denizens. It at first looks very familiar, a small but subtle looking Pokemon. But the heavy footfalls and sounds of trees all around you being knocked out in unison. Soon you see two large antenna on its head as it gets larger and larger as it walks towards you. Let's meet our Beast Paradox starter for this area. None other than Lyle Lyle Crocodile itself, Fuecoco. In our previous episode, the Ultra Basin, we turned our croc Pokemon Colossidal into an alligator, Gar, a fish. So of course our little crocodile here becomes an alligator lanternfly. Yeah, I don't know why I think it's so fun to do this, but this actually works pretty well, even almost as a convergent. The alligator lanternfly, or peanut bug, is a real weird one, having a funny head that works for both of its names but also reminded me a bit of Fuecoco's head. So I thought it'd be cute to have this absolutely massive Fuecoco running around with a little glowy antenna and being able to maybe even flutter along with tiny little wings. I gave it these false eyes down on its snoot that worked like an inverse of the peanut bug, made to make it look a bit more menacing than Fuecoco itself. But to be honest, it kind of looks funny and menacing in the way the posing and shading is done more than anything. It kind of has that pathetic meme energy. I end up updating the design here a little bit since I've been trying some other techniques and whatnot since doing the last Ultra Base in Pokemon. I guess no real design changes, but just art style updating. I chose pure bug here. I don't think any other type works well and having a pure bug type in the convergence just works. And it's just as silly as this way, Coco. Fue Coco, Beast Paradox form, the alligator bug Pokemon, a pure bug type. Due to adaptations and ultra radiation, Fue Coco developed this curious form. Unable to evolve further, they grew large, aggressive, and hardy. Their beak like mouths are incredibly hard and capable of toppling trees. They communicate with each other over long distances by knocking on trees in their own form of communication. The only entity that can truly contest Fuecoco in the Ultra Forest is Beast Miss Magius, which can easily shear apart their exoskeleton. Fuecoco in this form has the Ultra ability Ultra Rock Head. It's the same as normal Rock Head, but Ultra abilities can't be removed and stay with the Pokemon if you revert them back to their regular forms. I should also say that if you have a Skeledurge or even a Crocolore, giving them a Beast Paradox Stone will turn them into Beast Paradox for a Coco, at least until you revert them back. After proving yourself and defeating this big old menace boy, you now enter the forest. This forest's main gimmick is its almost Ocarina of Time Lost Woods layout. Each time you enter one of its small areas, you'd hear a Pokemon's cry. These cry wouldn't always be the same, so it'd kind of throw you about. This cry would ring out every now and then and get louder towards the exit where you'd have to go. If you're correct, you get closer to the goal. If you're wrong, you must face a harder room with more dangerous threats. Each room would also have random things happen, such as all your Pokemon being poisoned or burned for the room, or all their EVs or IVs dropping to zero for the room. You gotta be careful and plan accordingly. But let's meet some of the Pokemon that are also roaming around these wacky woods. In Fuecoco's entry, we talked about Beast Miss Magius, so let's talk about them first. My plan for this one was to play up a sort of Harpy or Strix idea with it, and was already given the perfect plan with Fluttermane. A, oh, uh, hold up, let me just put on my glasses. Having similar features to a ghostly pterosaur. Yeah, alright, that checks out, I'm sure. But what if Fluttermane got to evolve, sort of? I decided to make it keep the sort of almost dinosaur-like crest in Fluttermane, but convert it into more of a crest from, say, a cockatoo. So this isn't a dinosaur adjacent Pokemon like Fluttermane, just birdly, as if it's evolved from a dinosaur into a bird like real life. My plan was to make it so that this is the apex predator, save for the seasonal guardian here in the forest. 
everything lives in fear of it, and even one of our Pokemon later had its entire form changed because of Miss Magius. I imagine it'd be sort of an encounter randomly in any room where there's just a shadow on the ground, and if you accidentally stepped onto it, Miss Magius would swoop down for a difficult battle. Another pure type Pokemon here being pure flying type, which is quite rare. And it makes it so that pretty much no Pokemon here can contest it in terms of its typing. <laughs> Miss Magius Beast Paradox form the Harpy Hunter Pokemon, a pure flying type. The Ultra Forest is home to a hunter so efficient that many Pokemon hide in fear of it. Miss Magius make their homes in the largest trees, constantly watching for prey below. Their entire bodies are incredibly sharp. From their rending talons to their wings, they swoop down in a whirlwind of slicing attacks and then greedily consume any parts they have removed. This form of Miss Magius may be related to an ancient form of Mischievous. Miss Magius has the Ultra Ability Ultra Tough Claws. Not everything wants to horribly maim you here though. The next beast Pokemon is actually Heracross, been in a less aggressive form. More like the one in the anime that gave Bulbasaur the suck. No! The Ultra Forest is filled with flora that would be all weird and wacky, very alien. So I wanted to play up a bit of that trope here, that sci-fi just loves to do, having sort of bug creatures be a replacement for cattle, but also take reference from this Warhammer kit I just always wanted, but couldn't justify spending the copious amount of money it costs, so this is my tribute. I imagine this large Heracross in massive herds just chopping down on some strange grass, giving no hoots about you jumping about, maybe even encountering some kind of hermit from the Hibiscus Labs researcher who got lost here and now has their own herd of Heracross which they mill. I don't really want to think any further on Heracross milk actually. Let's just go with the idea that it grows berries and other alien fruits on its grassy beard for everyone to eat and never talk about milking bugs ever again. Heracross Beast Paradox form the herd Pokemon, a bug and grass type. One of the most plentiful Pokemon found within the Labyrinthine Ultra Forest is the peaceful form of Heracross. They live in large herds, devouring tons of grass each day, only leaving once food runs out or flocks of Miss Magius begin to swoop in. They aren't fast and usually fall prey to Miss Magius fairly easily. Their leafy beards grow from their sedentary lifestyle and sometimes bear fruit, which other Pokemon will gladly pluck. This form of Heracross has the Ultra Ability Ultra Kudchu. Let's talk some more strange flora, and I guess fauna. Rolling around, you'd see large coconuts. I'm talking like two foot coconuts. But it's not the outside that counts, it's the inside. And what's inside is a bit of a grub. Initially I wanted to make a Beast Paradox form for Crabominable that was literally just a coconut crab. A crab that was holding a coconut and play off more the original crab roller concept. The first draft of this ended up being a Crabominable that instead of the Yeti feet hands it was just holding a small coconut and the entire body looking like some kind of weird corn hillbilly creature. It was a good start but I didn't feel like it was inspired enough for my tastes. In the second concept, I went more for the idea that the crab is within the coconut, just lost in the source. These giant alien coconuts would be devoured from the inside by Crabominable and lived within, allowing them to hide within and do sort of a cannonball Ben 10 and bowl people over. This also allowed me to work on the actual Pokemon itself, making it smaller to fit within and make it look more like the actual meat of a coconut, which is reinforced by the colors. I also made the legs a bit more wispy and less detailed to show that when they fold themselves up, those legs sort of slot back into the body. In the end, I also made the coconut have a face-like shape that during combat it would probably peer through towards the foes, ready to walk sideways and strike them. Crabominable Beast Paradox form, the coconut crab Pokemon, a fighting and grass type. In the Ultra Convergence, Crabominable live inside giant coconut-like shells due to their small size. These shells provide excellent offense, defense, and maneuverability. They tuck their legs up and close the shell, then roll about like a bowling ball by shifting their weight. Their arm strength is sufficient to prevent enemies from forcing the shell open. 
Each shell has a unique pattern, with some even carved with angry faces to deter predators. Crabominable has a new ability called Coconut Crack, where physical grass-type attacks have a small chance to confuse and deal extra damage, but also confuse this Pokemon. We go from small to tall. Next, let's meet Beast Paradox Orphworm. And I thought it'd be fun to do a very silly kind of Alolan Exeggutor thing here and take it from a train worm to a coconut tree worm. I imagine that it's mimicking the strange alien trees that the coconuts Crabominable use fall from, but really they have adapted this way as well as the grass electric typing to try and defend themselves against Beast Miss Magius. These dudes are just super chill, spending their days walking around all goofy-like, with a smile on their face and soaking in the sun. No thoughts, head empty. In-game they'd probably be a bit smaller than their cannon height, much like Exeggutor, but I can imagine these guys attacking like a sippy bird, just smashing their head down. I love Orphworm's design, it's so goofy and fun, so making it even more goofy just feels so natural and perfect. I just want to give it a hug and like cling onto it as it takes me on journeys with the rest of the herd. In game, you'd probably run into a room of strange glowing trees and some of them would just end up being a beast orphworm. Wiglet and orphworm in Ultra Space would get along well, I'd say. No, it's not just because they're long boys. Okay, maybe it is. Orphworm Beast Paradox form, the towering Pokemon an electric and grass type. Orphworm have adapted ultra long bodies and camouflage to avoid the predators of the forest. Their lack of predation has also led them to develop a carefree and goofy personality. Parts of the ultra forest that stretch upwards towards the sky are actually an entire herd of Orphworm, all enjoying their lives. If something does startle them, they'll scamper away slowly. They are completely harmless, unless accidentally stepped on. Orphworm has the Ultra ability, Ultra Simple. Our last Pokemon before the Seasonal Legendary is a bit of a dark one, but I thought it was quite fun and fitting. I chose Copper Raja here, but I had this idea that sort of mixed together the whole making it into an Indian elephant, you know, the one that the Pokedex entries is always talking about, but also a reference towards the ivory trade and overhunting of elephants in general. Of course, with a Pokemon twist, that sounds like I'm doing some horrible YouTube episode about Pokemon and hunting. Oops. Here I wanted a smaller and more meek Copperaja. Kind of looks very sad and that's completely devoid of steel. Its ancestors were constantly assaulted by Miss Magius here and had their steel torn off and now they just have fleshy bodies. But even that isn't safe, being in a constant state of being scarred and depressed. I chose normal ghost type as it has very similar ideas to that of Hisui and Zoro's line, being a Pokemon that's essentially a bitter spirit of an elephant now. I go through quite a few iterations here before finally settling on an idea, which gives it a few more cartoonish and sad proportions. One thing I really like is the eyebrows. Weird I know, but the rendering of them just ended up being mwah. It's got sort of an Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh energy here which I dig. I know it's sad, but it's kind of cute. Copper Raja Beast Paradox form the Hunted Pokemon, a normal and ghost type. Due to Miss Magius stripping Copper Raja of the steel plates on their bodies, they gradually became smaller and now possess this spiteful form. Even now, they are still hunted and bear scars all over their bodies. The more scars a Copper Raja has, the stronger it is, driven by its bitter grudges. Although they are not overly dangerous to researchers, accidentally hitting one can cause an entire herd to become aggressive. This form of Copperage has a new ability called Pity Pulse, where taking physical damage sometimes causes a foe's attack stat to drop. So after solving the ordeals of the Ultra Forest, avoiding depressing elephants, small coconuts, and giant peanut bugs, you'd find yourself in the Inner Sanctum, a lone, destroyed Hibiscus Labs robot sits in the center. As the illusion of a beautiful forest fades, you see the entirety of this inner sanctum has been burned from this robot. As our next seasonal guardian descends from above, angered at any humor that dare steps foot within their forest. If you've been following since the start of the channel, or maybe kind of the start of Astara, where I did the seasonal guardians, 
Ontari is not only my favorite of these seasonal guardians, but kind of one of my favorite designs I've ever done. Being this sort of yokai-esque Japanese autumn design, it's just everything to me. My idea for this form was actually inspired a bit by a few things. One was the Monster Hunter monster Mizutsune, and kind of our Mudron too. And also the Luck Dragon from NeverEnding Story Falcor. I wanted this long version of Ontari, almost a noodle or sock puppet-like or long Furby, keeping much of the original design but adapting it into this shape of this long autumn leaf dragon that has a few similarities to something like Dragapult. Its inspiration in game also ties it into sort of a kitsune using illusions and other magic related stuff but with a ghost type spin to it. One of my fave design tropes with designs like Nefiri from League or Fangmon from Digimon are wolf-like designs with long spiky snouts. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just a cool design, so I thought I'd shove it in there. And it just works so dang well. Honestly, I can't decide whether I like Base on Tori or this Beast Paradox form more, and I feel like the Professor would probably have this in some kind of secret battle. It'd definitely be on my team regardless. Imagining this thing in a 3D model would be awesome, just like their body constantly shifting the leaves almost like it's made out of liquid. Now I want to make a 3D print of this thing and have a massive resin statue of it. Oh, I want it. Gimme, 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 gimme. Om Tori, Beast Paradox form, the Autumn Dragon Pokemon, a ghost and dragon type. The protector of the Ultra Forest is the Beast Paradox form of Omtori, which has undergone a shocking transformation. Omtori lives within the forest, guarding the Inner Sanctum and the Pokemon that dwell there. Using powerful illusions, it turns the forest into a labyrinth and watches as trapped foes slowly go mad. Most of its ghostly body consists of leaves, which disperse when attacked and then coalesce back onto Omtori as it watches their helpless foes with a smile. Omtori has a new ability called Ghost Force, where it boosts the power of ghost type moves for this Pokemon and their allies. The Beast Omtori doesn't call in reinforcements the normal way during its battle, but instead would be a multi phase battle. Each time you defeat it, it would spawn clones in the overworld, and you'd have to pick the right one, lest you'd have to battle Omtori with clones backing it up. So look at the animations and pick the right one and trounce that leafy noodle. Once defeated, it would head off into the forest for a later time for you to come back and try and capture it. There's one last main area in the Convergence, the Ultra Snowfields, and then there'll only be one or two more videos after that for a star. Wow, we've come so far. So thank you all so much for watching up till now. Hey, comment down below what your favorite star Pokemon is so far, and comment what you thought about the video. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on our adventures going forward. Get on your snow gear and cook yourself some spicy food because it's about to get chilly next time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.